Hello and welcome to another session on SQL Tutorials. In today's session, we are going to take a look at the group by and having class and also take a look at an example on how to identify duplicates in the database table using these two different classes. So let's start. So we have a table called the dbo.employee table and we have done a simple select statement on this table and the data on this table is now displayed for us. We can see that there are columns called the first name, last name, email address, phone, gender, department name, and salary. So these are the different columns that we have got in this table. Now to see the use of the group by clause. Group by clause is basically used for summarizations or aggregated calculations on these different columns in this database table. So let's say we have a scenario wherein we want to find out the maximum salary in each department. So in each department means we want to group by on the department name column and then we want to perform an aggregated calculation which is find out the max of all the salaries in that department. So how do we frame that query? So we can just write select star from db.employee then group by the key column on which we want to uh, perform our calculations on. So group by department name And then the thing that we wanted to identify was the maximum salary. So I'm going to go above here, put the department name, because I want to see the department name for which I have the maximum salary, and then use a function called the max function, and put my column, which is salary, as, give it an alias, so that I can see a column heading in my output for this column and then execute this query. If you execute this query, you can see that you have got different departments and there's also a department called null for which the maximum salary came out as null. And then the other departments called the engineering, marketing, production, tool design, and then we have the maximum salary values for all these departments. We can also add another aggregated calculation. Let's say we want to find out the minimum salary. So we can use a function called min again Write the column name on which we have to perform this computation. Give it an alias because if we do not give an alias, it would not have a column heading in the in the output. Let's see how it works if we do not give an alias. Let's just run this query. So it would be no column name. Okay, so just to give it a proper meaningful column heading, we, we can put an alias. And now we have the minimum salary values as well. Another thing that you need to remember with the group by clause is, so let's say I have decided to see the employee name as well, who has a maximum salary. So can you just put the first name here? First name, department name, and then just run this query. So you would get an error because, and the error says that the column DBO employee dot first name is invalid in the select list because it is not contained in either an aggregate function or the group by clause. So this is the thing that you need to remember with this clause that whenever you are using the group by clause, the columns that you can have in the select statement can only be the ones which are either in the group by clause or the ones on which you are performing some aggregation. All right, so you cannot have some columns on which you are neither performing an aggregation or neither grouping by a column. So you cannot have this column over here. So you can have something like this. So this is how the group by basically works. Now let's go back to our original statement, which was a simple select statement from this table and take a look at the data again. Okay, so now this is the data. Now, let's say what we want to do, and as we mentioned earlier, that we have some duplicates in this table, and we want to identify the data which has duplicates, because that is creating issues for us. So how can we do that using this group by class that we have just learned? Well, another example for the group by class here, so select staff from dpo.employee. And now the first thing that uh, we need to understand is how do we identify the duplicate data? So how do we 
identify a unique record first in a table. So you need to have some key columns based on which you are identifying whether the data in your table is unique data, unique record data, or duplicate data. So let's say we are saying that the duplicate data is any data which repeats on the first name and last name. So for any combination of first name and last name, we should have only one and a single record in a database table. If we have multiple records for a combination of first name and last name, then we put it as duplicate data. So this is how we are going to identify the duplicate data. So select so start from deeper employee. Now that we have identified the key columns, let's use a group by class. Group by and first name and last name are our key columns. So first name, last name. And um, since we cannot have any columns, so star would be like all the columns, and we have not grouped by all the columns, neither are we aggregating on all the columns. So we need to be precise over here. So we can say first name and last name again, the columns that we are grouping by on. And then we can use another function over here, which is count star, and that simply calculates the count of records for the combination of these key column values. So let's execute this query and see what we get in the output. So what we get in the output is the first name and the last name and the number of records and the database table that we have for this key combination of first name and last name. So you can see that for many of them, it is one. That means there's only a single record where the first name is Owens and the last name is Adam. But you can see that for some of them, the value is two. So for this particular person whose first name is Kevin and the last name is Brown, there are two records in our database table for this combination of first name and last name. Now we just said that we only wanted a single record to exist for any combination of first name and last name. So this identifies it as a duplicate record. So if you're just visually seeing the data in the table, you know just by looking at the count star that it is a duplicate record. But we are able to, uh, now we, the requirement is to identify all the duplicate records. And we can scroll down the data and see that there, there's another record which has duplicates. And if we scroll down further, we can see that, that that's all. We have two records over here. But we are able to scroll down here because we have limited number of records in a database table. Whereas in actual real-time scenario, there would be millions, there might be millions of records in your table. So this is not, you cannot just manually scroll through all the data in the table and try to identify the duplicate data. It has to be automated and done through the SQL query. So that is where the having clause becomes useful. So what you can do is just add the having clause over here, which is just an additional condition over on top of the group by clause, having count star greater than one. So anywhere where you have got this count star, which is your count of the record on the key combination of first name and last name, wherever you've got it greater than one, that means it's a duplicate record. So if you just execute this query, you would get all the records which have duplicate values. So now you can see that you have got the records on which you, on the com key combination of which you have got the duplicate values in your database table. So if there were many, you would have got the list of all those if, in case there were millions of records in this table as well. So this is how you use the having clause. It's basically using these kind of scenarios, for example, for identifying the duplicates, or wherein you have to add an additional condition on top of the group by clause. So this is how you use the group by and having clause together. So this is all about uh, this video, and we'll be setting more topics in, in the videos that will be coming out soon. So stay tuned, and thank you a lot for watching this video. Thank you.